and the Holy Spirit. Um, so, Heavenly Father, we thank you today evening, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this uh, um, teaching Monday, teaching in Adelaide. Uh, we thank for Sister Kiyomi for giving us the time to spread the word, teach us, guide, and uh, learn from learn from each other, Lord. And we thank all the participants who are going to learn uh, the scriptures and uh, grow with the scriptures, Lord. Thank you for giving your grace that we are able to uh, ex, um, uh, pass on this uh, the teachings and uh, multiply, Lord, as you multiplied uh, two loaves and five fishes. Lord, like that, we want to uh, um, multiply, Lord, to make people to know more about you, Lord, in, in this country and everywhere around us, Lord, especially our loved ones. We pray in a very special way, Lord, as we learn from this teaching today, Lord, through our sister Kiyomi. And thank you for blessing her and blessing others, Lord, as we continue this teaching from now onwards, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. 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 Thank uh, you, over, to you, over to you, Kiyomi. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Father. So today we are going to uh, study on something that is very uh, related to our everyday life. Many a times we are waiting on something, but we see it takes a lot of time or sometimes it may not have come to pass and then you wonder why. Okay, so we are going to understand something called active rest. Now it is two contradictory words. That one way we are saying it's active, but in another way, we are saying it is rest. Because the problem with many of us, and even um, I had recent uh, people that I've been talking to, and uh, the thing is, they keep saying, I did this, and I did that, and I've been doing that, and I've been doing that, and now I feel like it's not working, and this. So they themselves end up giving you what is the thing that is actually going wrong. It is the thing that they are focusing on is not on what God has done, and the greatness about what he is in our life, but it is more on what am I doing. It is all about my performance. Mm. And as long as I'm uh, focused on my performance, I can never rest in my mind because I will always think that I didn't do enough to gain God's approval or I didn't do enough to you know, get credit in order to receive that blessing or whatever. So mm -hmm. we see, let us go to the book of Hebrews 4, 11. Okay. School level. Amplified version, yeah. Okay, brother. You want to read? Yeah, I'll read. Let us, therefore... Make every effort to enter that rest of God to know and experience it for ourselves so that no one will fall by following the same example of disobedience as those who died in the wilderness. Now to give you a background of whom they are talking is, if you see in the beginning of this uh, passage, it is speaking about the Israelites. You know, the Israelites were in slavery. They were in captivity of under the Egyptians for long, many years. But they never came out of that mentality. You know, although they came physically out of Egypt, but God could not remove Egypt out of them. Physically, he brought them out, delivered them. But Egypt was so ingrained in them that he couldn't bring them out of it because every moment they did not remind themselves of God's goodness, but they reminded themselves of what is missing, what is lacking. What, you know, the things that we used to eat over there were so much better than the things we are eating now. They even got fed up of the manna that was being provided for them. Thank you, Jesus. And here, the reason why they are forgetting is because it is all the time about how much they can impress God or they can do. But yes, in the Old Testament, they had to offer sacrifices. They had to 
atone for the sins that they had caused. But in the New Testament, we are extremely blessed and highly favored people and generation that we are a forgiven generation. Our thing is not to perform, but how much can I actively keep my mind at rest? What? Not doing nothing, but based on the promises. And that's why he says, let us therefore make every effort see that word every effort now for example when my body is feeling like when my stomach is hungry or when i am thirsty what is my every effort to eat correct i will eat but to eat i have to go and find some cooked food or i have to go and find some snacks now what if i am staying uh, say in an apartment which does not have a kitchen facility mm. will i still make an effort to find food yes correct no you will make an order in today's world order comes very fast delivery of food yes you will make every effort to satisfy that hunger why because you know after a certain time if that hunger is not satisfied you can get a headache you become a very cranky person because of hunger have you seen a hangry person somebody yeah. who is hungry and then becomes angry yeah i am one of the examples not, <laughs> it's not a very nice thing to be around those people right because they suddenly become so angry but it's nothing but the hunger that they yeah. can't control and bear which has made them angry so they make every effort to satisfy that hunger to satisfy that thirst and the moment it is satisfied you give them anything to do any job any work any assignment they will get it done why because now they are satisfied they are at rest in their body their body is no longer having a craving hmm. in the same way how do i know when my soul is craving and needs to enter into that spiritual rest because where is the food coming for the soul from my spirit yes where is your physical food coming from this physical world so where is the food for my soul coming from from my spirit now when i want food will i go to the bedroom or will i go to the kitchen go to the kitchen kitchen right if, will you go to the bathroom if you need food if you need water no you will go to the correct place right in the same way when my soul is craving the only food that will satisfy my craving is the soul food the spirit food but what do we do when the soul is craving we go for worldly advice we go for worldly counseling we go the worldly ways is it going to satisfy my hunger of my soul no because that is not the source of the food for the soul the source of the food for the soul is the spirit and i have to make every effort to enter into that spiritual realm by professing the word confessing the word imagining the word giving thanks for that word and seeing the end result from the beginning and when i am in the process of this whole thing now i am entering into his rest because in that promise i can see the end result in that promise i can see the peace because i'm not the one who's fighting he is the one who's fighting on my battle he's fight on my behalf mm. are you understanding yes so when my you know many 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 of us christians we fail and falter here we are very quick to feed our body but we are very slow to feed our soul and our soul gets a uh, hungry every moment because the devil does not keep the mind from getting thoughts how do you know your soul is hungry when you are jealous when you are envious when you are bitter when you have an addiction when you have a craving when you are not satisfied with life when you are not at peace when you are all the time grumbling instead of you know seeing like for example if somebody says a uh, cooked for you something and bringing rather than appreciating the food you start commenting oh this taste is not so great have you seen people like that when you try to be a blessing to them in little ways they will still find something to complain about yes. thank you jesus and that is the time you know that the soul 
is craving the soul is hungry the soul is wandering thank you jesus and the only place to enter into rest for that soul is the spiritual food yes. and that's why it is very important for us to get an understanding who am i we are champions to do everything according to this world way the moment we face a problem like okay let me ask for example the moment you have something like say you have a cold and a cough what is the first thinking that comes to a person's mind brother uh, to go to the pharmacy and get one medicine correct okay many of us will think in that direction yes. now my question is in the bible days in the old days how come they went to live on to 900 years 800 years 500 years like that no uh, maybe they maybe used all the jadi buti jadi buti type you know all that you know uh, you they, know over uh -huh. there they did not have a mindset or they did not have a philosophy philosophy is a way of thinking mm. okay because most of us in life we have a way of thinking they did not have a thinking that oh now it's going to be flu season oh now the season is changing so by default all of us have to fall sick yeah they yeah. did not have that mindset are you understanding the difference between them and us yes. you know now we have so much of technology so much of exposure to information which is actually very very dangerous but at the same time it comes to our benefit if we know how to use it in the right way yeah. example doctors are excellent in fact they are blessed with wisdom from god himself if doctors were not there believe me most of the christians would perish because yeah. until the doctor gives us a solution and then we recover and that's when we understand oh this was a miracle and now we start learning the word of god so in our moment of danger it is the doctor who helped us right yes so they are very important people and that's why god has blessed them with us because god would never bless us with something that is not going to help us or benefit us but if all the time we remain dependent on that way only we will never learn to live in divine health because the bible says you can live fresh and green full of sap all the days of your life so you don't have to train your mind that now it's going to be flu season next is going to be summer season next is going to be some that pollen and something something season in mm -hmm. fact instead of saying those things you start speaking to your soul and telling your soul i am healed i am the body of christ the spirit of god which is inside of me is far greater than any of this sicknesses any of this viruses any of this other things that are in the outer side so this is how you enter into a place called rest yes what happens is we are already anticipating the sickness the season the sickness and the medications and everything that is going to follow or we are anticipating that breaking of the relationships and we are anticipating that divorce and we are anticipating those children who have gone astray are never going to come back so first only our imagination is all distorted in the soul mind and because of that we cannot enter into his rest but when you go into the promises of god it says the lord teaches my children and great is their peace are you meditating more on what you can see with your physical eyes or are you meditating more on what you can see from the spiritual food that you fed your soul and now in your imagination you're seeing your child is a wise man of god a blessed man of god a blessed woman of god you're seeing your relation restored and you're entering into that rest it is going to be an active rest that's why here in the bible rest doesn't mean sleeping and being passive it is active that means i'm actively resisting the devil and his temptation and thought that's why the word of god says submit god resist the devil it is an active word it is not a passive sleeping word mm. yes god so uh, you know um, like um, there was a person who i was talking to and this person is not uh, like if this person has something on the mind they can give up to 40 to 70 calls until you answer the call okay mm. that is the level of 
fear and desperation in this person mm -hmm. so after a certain amount of ministering to this person okay mm -hmm. there had to come a time where we had to deal with this spirit that this person was all the time satisfying that means if you have a problem immediately you will call me so now who is god for for this person you ha so was i was i doing the correct thing no now in my mind i know where we are going but in that person's mind that person started depending like a crutch yes so what i ha what what had to be done and thank you holy spirit for the wisdom that he gave me on that day it was a holy anger and i asked the person mm. am i your holy spirit am i your god that you give me 40 and 70 calls i said no i said you have been trained you have been given the homework i said every time somebody calls you or disturbs you or disturbs the rest in your mind and you turn to me it means you have not yet understood how to enter into the rest using the scriptures okay, okay? initially i uh, was a little stern with the person but then i told the person i said see i'm not scolding you but i am scolding the spirit that you're entertaining because the moment you get into unrest i told that person stop everything and do whatever it takes to come back into that rest till then don't continue your work because everything is going to be messed up mm. fear is only going to be accumulated and i said to come into god's presence it doesn't take very long he says you keep your mind stayed on my word continually constantly and i am the one who will give you peace isaiah 263 i said that's all you got to do yes. and when i told this person this okay that person took it very seriously followed it and learned to overcome battles where this person was not sleeping because of so many reasons having so much of fear so much of dependency on other people so much of you know approval from other people was necessary this person has been set free thank you jesus thank you jesus and that's why it says make every effort that word is very important for me make every effort that's why i told this person stop everything you do the moment you're so disturbed because now you know and you know that if you let it go or as we call it put it under the carpet the devil will keep bombarding you with thoughts but mm. at the onset of the thought you need to crush the head of satan hallelujah i don't know if i gave this example last time here or in an but when the when the thought is coming it is like the snake's head is going to move around your head and try to wrap himself the thought okay but now the moment you open your mouth the word of god crush the head of satan that is what happened that's the picture and that's why it says make every effort that means at the onset of it before it can wrap around your head before it can make your life more miserable you mm -hmm. go and captivate that thought and go into his rest because once you're into his rest is where there is wisdom there is understanding there is knowledge there is counsel there is comfort everything you need is there how to move on with the situation what to do next what not to do next thank you jesus and that's why it says make every effort to enter that rest of god why to know and experience it for ourselves sometimes when we look at preachers teachers of the word of god what we say are he even in the midst of the crisis look at this person right mm. we look at the outward uh what you can say harvest but did you see how much time that person has been laboring to stay actively into that rest yes ma'am we yes. see that when this person lays hands he healings are happening deliverances are happening when this person speaks people are getting free from bondage and this and that we see all these outward signs and expressions and we think oh this person is very anointed but do you pause to go and ask that person and ask that person how many hours do you spend actively in his rest on his word because the more you learn to 
stay active in his rest, you will get the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge. Why were these Israelites always confused? Because they were not rest. You always notice, okay, when you're making a big decision and if your mind is already jumbled, you will make the worst decision of your life. Mm -hmm. You will add even more trouble to already existing trouble. Mm -hmm. But when your mind is at rest and stayed on the Lord, there will always be an inner voice directing you, guiding you, Baba, this is the way. Yeah. That's why he says, my word is a lamp unto you and a light unto your pathway. That means he will give you instructions little by little. There's two reasons why you'll get instructions little by little, okay? Because I never understood this, but when I understood this, it made complete sense to me. The mm -hmm. first is, when I have little by little, okay, and when I don't know the whole plan, am I completely trusting him? Yes. Because what happens is in our day-to-day -day life, we want the entire plan. Once you have the entire plan, then you're like, okay, let me avoid this. Let me go this because there, there's trouble. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So there's no dependency on God. There's all self-dependency. So now are you depending on his rest or are you satisfied just because you know the whole plan? Second reason is if he gives you all the steps and you're already so overwhelmed with what all is going to happen to you that you don't even want to start out on that journey. Now there will be that guilt and condemnation that, oh, the Lord entrusted me with so much, but I just don't have the courage to go through all of it. And there will be such a heavy burden upon you for not being able to carry it out. And he doesn't want you to carry that burden. That's why he gives you little, 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 and whatever little, little, little instructions, he's already equipped you that you will be able to go and do that. That's why he says to do every good work. We are his workmanship created in his image unto all good works. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that is how I come to know him. I come to experience him closely. I, I can now confidently say that when I was at this point in life and I was resting in his rest, this is what I experienced. On the outside, everything looked like it's not going to happen. On the outside, everything looked like a mess. On the outside, all the people who were once supporting me turned their back on me. On the outside, I thought I'm never going to make it. On the outside, I thought that this was the end of my life. And right then, when I chose and I made a decision, again, make every effort, that is a decision. When I made the decision to enter that rest, now what happens? Now I know him personally. I have experienced him personally. And because I know him and experienced him, nobody can tell me otherwise and nobody can get me out of that rest. Only me if I give the devil access to my thoughts again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So Thank you Jesus. have to ask yourself in the day today, okay? Don't go very far. You have already completed the day in Adelaide, right? So yes. in the day, you can see how many times were you at rest and how many times were you restless. Whenever you were restless, you had every effort to depend on your strength mm. to make it happen. And many people think it is very difficult, but it is as simple as saying, Lord, on my own, I can't. But your word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And right now I'm believing that it is you who has given me the wisdom, you who has given me the understanding, you who has taught me what I need to do. And based on this, I'm going to move forward. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, sometimes they ask, sister, how do we know we are taking the right step or the wrong step? See, in the new covenant, always, always, always remember this one thing. God is looking more at your heart condition above every other thing. Now, supposing you thought that God told you to take path B. And so you started moving along path B. But actually, God was trying to take you on path A. Okay, now we have not to get disheartened because he's looking at your heart that along the way, every moment you're turning to him, waiting for instructions, turning to him, waiting for instruction, giving him thanks, giving him praise, 
walking in agape love with other people, remaining at rest, remaining in patience. And he's seeing all of this. So he will put blocks where you're not supposed to go or he will introduce people or some teachers or some spiritual parents or spiritual friends or spiritual fellowship to reroute you to take you to path A. Please, God. Yes. But above all, he's just looking for your heart condition. So don't be too focused on, am I doing it the right way? Like, like um, uh, just uh, I, somebody told me, I have been writing the notes. I have been uh, trying to study, but now I came to a point where I can no longer study the notes. Now, is this person really studying to know and experience Jesus? Or is this person just doing it because it became a to-do list given to that person? Ah, if it is my to-do list it will become a burden after some time but if I am really not happy or really frustrated or really angry with the way my life is and now I want and I want a change I have zero tolerance for the nonsense that's going on in my life and I make that choice that Lord if your word is true I'm going to put it to application I'm going to use it I'm going to speak it confess it meditate and see the end result come to pass. Until then, I'm not giving up. If you have that kind of a determination, that is when you will start knowing him and experiencing him. Yes. And this knowing and experiencing, many times they will ask you also, how to meditate scripture? But you know, when a scripture you have been speaking and speaking and speaking and boom, one day you're in a crisis and the Holy Spirit reminds you just of that scripture. Okay, and you start speaking it and you see yourself being delivered. Do you now need to by heart that scripture or has that word become flesh to you that you will never ever forget it because now you know that scripture, but now you also have an experience with that scripture. And so now that scripture has become very real to you that even in the middle of the night, if you're woken up and asked, you can speak it. Right? Yes, praise God. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So are we supposed to Put the Bible in the head or are we supposed to live the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so is anybody in a hurry to finish the portion? Because many times people say, I hear the teachings every day. I keep on hearing so many teachings. It's not about how many teachings you hear, but it's about that one teaching you hear 10 times and you try to keep your mind stayed on those words only. Get into the rest based on those words and see God's glory come to pass with that video itself. Yes. That one video can speak to you volumes and volumes and give you revelation after revelation after revelation. But am I entering into his rest? Brother, can you put the scripture? I think it went. Thank you, uh, Jesus. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 4 11. Yes. So, and now it says, okay, so that no one will fall by following the same example of what? Disobedience. Disobedience. Why did Al Adam fall in the Garden of Eden? Because of disobedience. And how did, how did Jesus win back man's authority on earth? Because of obedience. And that is the key for you and me today and every day, obedience. From the moment I wake up till the time I sleep, am I going to obey to enter God's rest through his word? That means keep my mind stayed on his word. Or am I going to do whatever I need? And then when I'm falling in trouble, now I'm crying and running around like those people in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, and you have to understand People who are very close to you will be used to disturb your rest. Mm -hmm. See, if a neighbor or some far off distant person is telling you something, would you care? No. Because anyways, you, you don't have anything to do with that person. That person has nothing to do with you, right? Correct. Right. 
but the people whom you are living with the people who you love the people who you work for the people whom you are doing different things now do you feel that these people when they say something it matters to you yeah it, 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 and you have ah and you have to be very careful whom you are fellowshipping and friendshipping with because those people can take you in rest or bring you out of rest for example recently i had spoken to a, a person who's like recently i think married or something like that so this person has some issues going on mm. in the marriage now this person one of the spouse is following the word of god Get, now getting rooted okay learning the ways of the word but what happened was this person happened to meet a friend whom this person has met after four years and this person is connected to the other spouse now this person thought that if i spend some time with this person i will get some information about my spouse what my spouse is doing how my spouse is you know how it is right mm. the emotions now this person took the person to a place where it is like a club or a pub now yeah. do you think that is a place of rest or restlessness restlessness complete restlessness ah so when all <clears throat> everything around became restless now what happened inside everything became restless now the person reached to an extreme where the person thought it is better i will commit suicide wow. and that's the time the person called me and then i asked i asked the person if you think such a fellowship is going to benefit you what is the difference between you calling that person and fellowshipping and you calling me and fellowshipping yeah i said you have to make a choice whether you want to be in this boat or that boat otherwise you'll be nowhere and the devil will take you for a joy ride and just like he put judas alone in desperation that now when you're alone see that friendship went that fellowship went they finished their bar party everything went now this person is left alone with their thoughts brought this person into restless mind now what is the devil doing when the person is alone tormenting and giving thoughts of committing suicide why you need to stay alive your life is useless your life is this way your life is that way so i have to make every effort which means i have to check who are my friendship and fellowship throughout the day mm. i have to check whom am i talking to whom am i chatting with on the mm. mobile phone that is also going to make me rest or become restless and through those friendship fellowships if there is somebody who truly truly loves you know as a person and sees you for who you are whenever you make a mistake that person will gently correct you okay but that person will never lead you to do something that is contradictory to god's word if the person is leading you to do something that's contradicting to god's word you can know and know that you have to make every effort to run away from them run away from that friendship otherwise you will fall into the same example of disobedience as those people in the wilderness what yeah. were they were they encouraging each other or were they you know like crabs pulling each other down like crabs only pulling each other ah so do you have some crabs in your life that you need to get rid of yes we do now please don't go and tell people okay on their face your crabs <laughs> you treat everybody with love because you owe no man anything except to love them but you don't need to extend extra hours of chatting and speaking and talking just because you want to please them no thank you jesus thank you if Jean. you want your life to be different okay now brother let me ask you one very everyday simple question supposing tomorrow uh, somebody had to say oh you're a christian so i'm going to capture you and take you and put you in the prison okay now Yeah. do you think in today's world us christians there is enough evidence to to prove that we are really christians compared to the other people who are not christians is there enough evidence in 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 the looking at the word of god we we we, we can say this evidence is there 
that Jesus died for us in died for us. No, 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 no. See, see, what I mean to say is now, yeah. for example, let's take COVID season, okay? Yeah, yeah. When COVID season came, what was the difference between the Christians and the non-Christians? Wasn't the reaction the same? Everybody same was filled with fear. Yes, everybody was filled with fear. Ah, when there is the flu season, how does the Christian and the non-Christian speak? They everybody go for flu shot. Yes. Same, same language, right? When there is a relationship problem, what is the response of a Christian and a non-Christian? Yeah, same, same problem. Same. So is there enough evidence in today's world to convict a Christian of being a Christian or are we like just any other person of this world? Like any other person like in the world. And because we don't have this knowing and experiencing for ourselves, we are not very good ambassadors of Christ. We are not very good witnesses of Christ. Because when you, when somebody looks at us, looks at our lifestyles, looks at the way we behave, we talk, we respond or react to situations. Now the other person is either encouraged or discouraged and says, if this person being a Christian is like this, I'm better off just being who I am. Mm. So every moment we think we are not being watched, but actually every moment somebody or the other is watching you. Yes. As a Christian, whether you're in a store, like if you're in a line, okay, in a grocery line. Now, are you losing your patience and getting out of rest because the line is too long? Yes. But you know, maybe you're the only person standing there who knows how to speak words by faith and plant seeds in the lives of all those people who are around you. Yeah, there is, there is, there is chance to do that, yes. But do we do that or do we start grumbling and say, Kya, yaar, such a long line, how much time they're taking, that cashier is very slow, what kind of service is this? Yeah. The right, and especially, it, yes, Nat brother? Naturally, the person will start talking like that only when the long line is there and, and too big and then start talking like that only. Exactly. And then when you go to school, uh, like I'm talking for the college and school level people, okay? When you go to school and college and now you see all the best of fashion, the best of uh, electronic devices with your friends and, you know, they're coming in uh, like big cars and vehicles and different things. What's happening to you yeah. as a teenager? They, they, they desire to have the same thing. Ah. Desire. And then do they make demands from the parents? Yes, 100%, yes. And then do they get upset if the parents are unable to fulfill? Yeah, today's generation that is happening, they want money. So Correct. Because we have not made every effort to first and foremost as ambassadors of Christ enter into rest so that people who are watching us can also imitate and do the same. They don't have an example. Because maybe in your office, you're the only Christian over there. Yeah. I mean, who's following the word. There could be a lot of other Christians by title, but not by uh, lifestyle. Okay, but you might be one among them who's there, who has a lifestyle, who's according to the word of God. Yes. Please. But then if you yourself don't know and have not experienced it and don't enter into that rest, but every time a project comes or every time something comes, you're also getting hyper like the rest of them. Is there any difference? No, no, no difference. We can uh, so we have to actively labor to enter into his rest. So laboring to enter God's rest, it sounds like a like a, a like paradox, opposites. Okay. But it takes effort not to strive. Because what happens in this world, if you don't take tension, then they say you're very lazy, you're not bothered. You don't tell me that there is no idea. It is so much going on, right? People yes. say like that, right? But in God's kingdom, is saying, if you take so much of care and burden, you're going against my command because my command clearly says, therefore, do not worry. Let's go to Matthew 6, 31, 33 to 33. Thirty one. Thirty thirty three. Thirty one to thirty. Thirty one to thirty. Yeah. Shall I read? Shall I? 
Yes. Therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted. Pause. Say, yeah. Pause. See, is he is he giving you a request or is it a command? It's a command. Command. And now when an officer is given a command by his uh, senior, can he say, no, I have no, some no. work to do. I'll come and no. follow it later. Not at all. You have to follow. So if you call yourself a warrior, a soldier of Christ, and he's telling you do not worry, and he's even given you the idea how not to worry by making every effort to enter into his rest, correct? Yes. So that you can know and experience him. He's even telling you how. But now you sit and worry in one area or two areas. That means you're perpetually uneasy, continually uneasy. You're continually distracted. There is something taking your attention. Mm -hmm. Now, even you might be sitting in this class, but can there be something distracting you? Like maybe you're thinking, Are kal uh, mein kapda kya penne ka hai office ke liye? Ya bag, laptop ka bag pack karne ka hai I have to still pack my laptop bag. Or I have to still, tomorrow what should I take for tiffin box? Can be different thoughts going on in the mind. Yeah, it could be, yes, definitely. Or tomorrow I have that meeting with that boss presentation mm. I have not yet completed. After this class, I hope this class gets over fast. Can be different things, right? It could be, yes. So, we can be distracted very easily and that's why we need to stay into his rest. See what he's saying over here. Do not be perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat or what are we going to drink or what are we going to wear? For the pagans, that is the Gentiles, eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry for your heavenly father knows. knows. Did you see the word know was there in the previous scripture also? So what is know? Know is an intimacy, intimate relationship. Like how husband knows the wife, wife knows the husband, right? Mm -hmm. Before marriage, they knew about each other but not everything yeah. but the most time they spend now they can complete each other's sentences they would know each other's temperament each other's moods correct in the same way heavenly father knows you know why because that's the amount of time he spent when he was creating you he already knew you perfect even before you were formed in your mother's womb and he yes. knows that you will have need of all of these things and then he goes on to say, but first and most importantly, seek. Yes. And now this word seek is very, very important for us. And see what it says. Aim at, strive after. I would say look into again and again and again and yet not be satisfied and keep looking and looking. Like if you're searching for peace, you tell the Lord very simply, Lord, I want to experience that peace which surpasses all human understanding. I don't know how. And you keep on repeating it and 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 repeating it. And suddenly you will start knowing and you will start experiencing that peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. But first and most important, he's first. He doesn't say last. He says first. Yes. When I seek him, what happens? I'm already making every effort to enter into that rest. To say, Lord, I'm giving you the highest place. Nothing and no one else comes first. Many times I've seen parents put children first. Mm -hmm. Or wife puts husband first. Or husband put wife first. Or some sons will put mother first. Some daughters will put father first. Or some people will put their this, uh, office titles first. The office position, status, business. But he says first and most important, that means above this, there is nothing more important. Seek his kingdom, his righteousness. And what is this his kingdom and his righteousness he's explaining? That means his way of doing and being right. In other words, obedience. Please, God. Because Jesus was obedient. That means he sought he every day was seeking how the father wanted things to be done in a right manner. The attitude, the character of God. 
and this is what Jesus always said, and this is what I always would ponder. I always used to, because I did not understand the difference back then very good. So I used to always think, if Jesus is God, why he couldn't do things on his own? Why he has to always take instructions from his father? Because he loved his father. He was obedient to him because he knew his father very intimately. He experienced the love of the father very uh, closely. And because of that, he was always in a position of rest. Never in the ministry of Jesus, you will see him hyper or restless when a demoniac would come to him or when anybody with any problem would come to him. Any person with any affliction would come to him. Even the leper came to him. He had no problem. Even the adulterer woman came to him. He had no problem. They came to stone her and he was there. He had no problem. Why was he constantly, continually? That's why it says constantly, continually at rest. Yeah. Because he was always laboring to enter into that rest. That's why he's to commune with the father. When you and I, we say, no, we pray, we pray, we pray. Ask yourselves, can you spend more than, I will not say, long minutes, five minutes, only mm. saying thank you, Jesus. Five minutes, only saying thank you, Jesus. It will be the most difficult prayer for any one of us. Because we are not used to glorifying God and thanking him just because he is God in our life. It's very difficult. But it's very easy for us to say prayers where there are a lot of petitions attached. Yeah. Where there are a lot of, Lord, do this for me. Lord, do that for me. Da, 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 da. We can spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes repeating those requests again and again. But even to do five minutes of only thank you, praise you, Jesus, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. We cannot do because it will be very difficult for us. But the, remember, the more you glorify God, the more you give him the highest praise, the more you want to seek him just for who he is in your life and not for what he can give you, you are beginning to develop an intimate knowing relation. You are going to experience his goodness, follow you all the days of your life and you will come into that rest where now restlessness cannot distract you or make you uneasy. Yes, ma'am. And now because you are so at rest, like if you see, no, the disciples, they were all fishermen. Do you think fishermen are nice people to hang around? No, not at all. Their language also will be very slang and so many things, right? But yeah. amidst all of that restless situation, was Jesus a symbol and, a, and an active representation of rest? Yes, so even when you are going to office or you're going to school or you're going to college and there is all this worldly people who are hanging around you, surrounding you, but can you be that representation of active rest in God's word? Yes, we can. We can, we can portray that. Yes, because we have the word. How about your family? In your family, maybe not everybody is in the word of God or maybe somebody is on a different level as you are. Maybe mm. you're at a little higher spiritual level because you've been spending more time. But are you a representative? Are you a reflection of that active rest, laboring to keep your mind stayed on God's word in your family atmosphere? Or in your family, do you become like a hooligan at home? Screaming, yelling, shouting, getting angry. I have to ask myself, if I say that I'm making every effort, so no matter where I am, whether I'm in my house environment, whether I'm in my office environment, whether I'm in my school environment, college environment, church environment, or anyway, marketplace, anyway, am I constantly an active representation of being in rest in my mind? Of being a person whose mind is stayed on God's word no matter what? And if I cannot, there is no problem. You can always start now. God is not condemning you. He's not judging you. And that's why he says, come on, seek me, seek my kingdom. Whatever you need after that, 
I am the one who will make it added unto you. But don't get into restlessness by going on to that addition and forgetting the main thing that you need to do. Whenever you go to the sales and all, you will see buy one, get one free. How many of you all get restless thinking, how can I get that free item without, without buying the main item? Mm -hmm. Do we do that in the world? Uh, yeah, we'll be thrown out of the shop, no? Yeah, 100% they'll throw you out. First, they say to buy first and then you get that free. Correct. So in my spiritual life also, why am I always trying to tell God, you give me the free item, the seeking part, let the preacher do, let somebody else do. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's why we are always going to somebody else and telling them, hey, you pray for me. Hey, you. I'm not against pray for me, okay? Don't, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying, please. Okay? So what I mean to say by this is, you have every opportunity to enter into his rest, to know him and to experience him so that now when you know and experience him, you yourself can become an ambassador of Christ where you are actively representing being in rest on his word by your lifestyle, by your character, by your nature. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And, and the first key is do not be worried. Do not be anxious. If you want to enter into his rest, like how King Jehoshaphat says, I don't know what to do. I'm powerless without you, but my eyes are fixed on you. Yes. And don't continue anything further on if your mind is disturbed. Just pause and change, 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 change that mindset, change that atmosphere, change that restlessness to rest and then continue your work and you see you will be doubly productive. Yes. What you could not make happen maybe in four or five hours, the Lord will give you supernatural wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, everything, excellence and you will be able to do it in half an hour. What was not getting solved for years, you will just start seeing things moving in your favor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank, you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So it's all about your choices. Do you want to remain restless or do you want to remain in rest? I can wake up in the morning. You know, many people, what happens is when we wake up in the morning, we look at the phone first. Yes. Can you make a small, uh, how would I say it? A change. Try this, okay? I don't know if it works for you. Try it. Try to keep your mobile a little further away from you and keep the white book or the Bible next to you, okay? And the first thing when you wake up in the morning, just open that one book and read just one line. Just read it one time, three times, five times, whatever, and then get up from the bed. Now, if you keep the white book, the first thing you will see is I'm the body of Christ. Yeah. Okay. And then you say this to yourself three times, four times, and then you move out of the bed and go about doing your work and start seeing this small change will bring how much of difference in your mind. Whether your mind is restless or at rest from the moment you start your day till the time you end your day. Small changes, small corrections, small new habits will help you in a long way to enter into his rest. That's why it says make every effort. So even the smallest change is a big change in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Over to you, brother. And if anybody has you, any Jesus. questions. Yes, God. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yes, sister. Thank you for the message. Anybody Thank has any Jesus. questions? <laughs> yeah. I think no one has a question. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Sister Elizabeth, we cannot hear what you are saying. Only a noise is coming from your end. Brother, are you able to hear anything? No, nothing. Uh, nothing is coming. No, she must have kept it uh, by mistake on. Yeah. 
the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord himself. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So you do this one, okay? Because there were many times when I don't know also if I'm going the right direction or wrong direction. And I would say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I'm believing right now. You're watching over me. You have your eye upon me. I am the righteousness of the Lord. And it, you direct the step of the righteous. And I believe that this step which I'm taking forward, though other people might challenge me, my own people might not support me, my own people might not understand what I am doing. I'm still going to believe that it is you who's leading me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise so, God. That, that is exactly what you said, you know. I wanted to share a testimony like, you know, in my workplace also when uh, when I climb staircase and climb, uh, climb the, um, the this. Uh, ladder and remove something, bring it down, push it out. The people who are in mid-twenties, they look at me and say, how can, why are you doing, how can you do this when you, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to carry. I said, no, I got strength, but God gives me strength. And uh, but showing that we can do it, they get encouraged and they said, I want to be like you, how you're working and how you're doing it. I really like it. So I become an example of that to make others feel it's not hard. It's not, but we can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. So I prove yes, that. Yes, because you brother, can... you entered his rest, right? And now yes. you know and you've experienced how he has helped you. And that's why you can be an ambassador to the younger people who are watching you. Yes, yes. Praise God. Praise so, God. So that's what I wanted to share. That. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, brother. You. There's a sister, Olivia, whose hand is raised, I believe. I don't know uh, on the screen, if you see next to the name. Ah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Olivia, you want to say something, Olivia? Praise God. Olivia, I think she... I, I couldn't see the hand gone up. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, brother. Okay, then we'll, we'll do a closing prayer. So, yes, brother. Please, Huh? Somebody else. Somebody else to do closing prayer. Kon karega? Anybody ready? Sister Fatima. Paita ne kon hai? Yes, brother. Yes, ah, Jesus. Bold the uh, closing prayer. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for giving Sister Kiyomi uh, that the word that she has shared. It was a uh, very anointing and uh, whatever she had shared with us that we need to rest rest only on you lord only on your word and it is only your word that can give us rest lord today as we have her it's not Sister Kiyomi, it's the Holy Spirit who's strengthening us and giving us guidance and giving us His truth, His word that we need to share and we need to stay upon and we need to rest on. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I praise you. I praise for who you are. And who are you to be worthy of praise? I thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving me an opportunity to be here in your presence, to hear your word, and to know you more intimately, more personally, and to have a more deepened relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I know that I'm not worthy, but by your strength, by your ability, and by your guidance, Lord, I know that not with my performance, not with my strength, or not with my ability, but by your ability, by your strength, I can do all things, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for sharing this word by Sister Kiyomi. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank you. Jesus, 
my lord and my savior i make this prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen amen, amen. beautiful beautiful sister uh, 